my name's Alexander and it's been a while since we've had a book review, hasn't it? So I'm going to do one today. I'm going to review The Complete Stories, Volume 1, by Isaac Asimov, which is a collection of short stories by Isaac Asimov. Would you have guessed it? Before I start, let's make this convention that whenever I need to refer to the title of one of the stories, I will point at the book and say the title. So if I say, Dreaming is a private thing, I'm not trying to make a statement, I am referring to the story in the book with that name. I can't really do a plot summary of it because the stories aren't connected in any way and they're, they're very separate and can be read in any order. So what I'm going to do instead is first, for the people who are familiar with the writings of Isaac Asimov, I'm going to say a few words about it and then I'm going to come back to you others. This is volume one. There is a volume two and there was a plan for volume three but it never got published. I don't know if in the end they were planning on having all of his short stories in these three volumes but in any case this is only volume one so it does not have all of them. So what does it not have? It doesn't have a lot of his robot stories. I mean Multivac is mentioned here and there, the supercomputer Multivac. But there's only really one story which properly involves Multivac. And again, there's only one story which is actually about a robot. And again, if you want robot stories, the book you need is The Complete Robot, not The Complete Stories. There's no explicit mention of the Galactic Empire either, but I wouldn't be surprised if he intended some of the stories to actually take place in that universe. So, so far I've only really said what the book is not about, so maybe we should move on to what there is actually in the book. You've got 25 short stories spread out over 430 pages, something like that. Yes, I'm brilliant. I liked all, almost all of them, but then again I do have a thing for Isaac Asimov. Uh, they're, what I like about them is that they're quite varied. You get the different kinds of science fiction and different kinds of ways Isaac Asimov can write. There's one story taking place in 1956 and another one, The Last Question, goes all the way up to the end of the universe. I would call all of them science fiction, but they do also sometimes border other genres as well. For example, I'm in Marsport without Hilda and The Dying Knight are more like detective stories that just take place in a futuristic setting. Of course this setting turns out to be important, but nevertheless more like a detective story. Uh, what you also have is in Gimmicks 3, a demon is being summoned, which suddenly is much more reminiscent of fantasy. Similarly in, oh, what are they called? The Last Trump and Spell My Name With An S. You have supernatural beings involved in the story once again. Oh, and finally, two of the texts are actually not short stories, but poems. Granted, poems about science fiction, but poems nevertheless. Fancy that! Back to you others. I hope you could still follow some of that, even though I did sometimes mention previous writings of Asimov. I will assume that maybe you haven't read any science fiction at all, so let me start by explaining what is science fiction actually, and why is it not fantasy? Science fiction as the name would suggest, is a mixture of science and fiction. What this means is that the author can take some science, maybe develop it a bit further to his fantasy and then incorporate that into a fictional setting. So the author is allowed to make up new technology, new science, as long as it still obeys the basic rules of physics. He can even make up new terms like chronoscopy, which is Greek and means viewing of time, as long as it's properly explained because the more consistent the science is and the better it explained, the better the science fiction is as well and the more plausible and realistic it feels. So typically a science fiction story would involve things like spaceships and aliens and futuristic technology, but none of these are actually essential to the science fiction genre as such. Science fiction is also often confused with fantasy, which Maybe some people find similar, but in my opinion is completely different. I will admit that sometimes the line between the two can be a bit hard to distinguish, and I mentioned earlier that Asimov does invoke magical creatures sometimes in his stories. But nevertheless, there is a difference between the two genres. And this, if anything, is science fiction. I have a friend who told me once that, for him, science fiction is only science fiction if it involves aliens. And that's an interesting theory, but the nice thing about Asimov is that he can write extremely good science fiction without bringing into play creatures from other planets. Occasionally, yes, they do appear, but 
in most cases, they don't. This is actually from an incident that he had when he was starting as an author. He wrote a story that involved aliens and then the story got rejected. And so he decided from now on he's only going to write about galaxies that are entirely populated by human beings. And I think it's a nice thing that he doesn't always just talk about aliens because personally I sometimes find it to be a little cheap when authors just throw in aliens to make stuff happen. Instead Asimov has to be creative and make up science fiction by writing about other things like computers and robots and interplanetary travel and other things like that. Asimov also has a very personal way of writing his stories. I mean, I've, I've read others and I'm now beginning to recognise it. Typically, you will have in the beginning of a story some kind of mystery or some kind of unexplained term that you, as the reader, do not understand while everyone else in the story seems to do. And only gradually from reading on will you then get what this whole affair is about. So, for example, in Franchise, everyone seems overly excited about the process of voting and I don't just mean excited I mean really really the whole country is on fire and then only after reading on a bit you realize that in fact only one person is allowed to vote in this future and it's like that with the other stories as well there's some clever elements some some simple thought experiment that is only that defines an entire world and that's only really explained to you after reading on not only does it want to make you read on it also gives you the pleasure when it's finally fully explained to you and it all seems to fit if you've never read any science fiction before, I think this could be possibly a good place to start. The reason is it has these very varied stories and it's showing you the entire range of what a science fiction story can look like. I'm not saying you're definitely going to like it because there are just some people who don't like science fiction but if you're not sure and you want to find out then this is a good place. Alternatively you could also try and buy a, an anthology of stories by different authors but Isaac Asimov is quite a famous one and here's a good one so in my opinion it would be a good place to start. Anyway I hope you enjoyed the book review and that you weren't too much put off by the fact that I seem to like science fiction. More videos should be coming up soon.